open a new Amazon FBA product to Amazon. Once you're on your Amazon seller dashboard, scroll over inventory and click on add a product. Once you're ready to add your product to Amazon, you're going to go ahead and put in the pre-existing UPC number, or if you're creating a new listing, then you're going to click on this right here to create a new product listing. Choose the category of what you would like to sell in. Keep in mind, some Amazon categories are gated, and you can find that here by seeing what is gated and what is not gated on your specific seller account. Some sellers will have more than others, and some will have less than others. We're going to go ahead and sell in the clothing, shoes, and jewelry department. Once you choose what you want to sell, you're going to be taken to the dashboard. And on this dashboard is where you're going to put the specifics of your product. Start off with your product name. Make sure you add some SEO keywords into your product name to help it be better searched. You'll find by looking at other Amazon products that there's a ton of keywords in their titles. You will hardly ever find a title that is just the product name itself. It's going to say my product name for, for Christmas birthday gifts, holidays. You'll see different keywords inside the product name title. This is going to help your product be found when someone is searching for your specific product. So go ahead and add not too many keywords, but a good amount of keywords and make sure it also reads well. Product ID. This is where you're going to place your UPC code that you just purchased. You can get a UPC code from GS1 or using a website that we use called snapupc.com. They have very cheap UPC codes here that you could use on Amazon. Once you place your UPC number in here, keep in mind you cannot use this UPC number ever again. Place your brand name here. Your brand name should be your own brand, your own seller name. Color. Choose the color of your product. Depending on what product you choose, these settings are going to be different. Since this is a clothing product, they are going to ask for more details about the specific product. If you are just selling maybe training cards or sports cards, then you will find there's probably less questions on how specific your product is. But for this example, we're using clothing. So again, your brand name, your color of the product, the color map such as the values, and you're just generally going to put the same colors that you did up here, but this is for Amazon to set the color map. Department, is it for adults, children, men, women? That's where you choose it here. Size, what size is this product in or available in? If you want to put multiple sizes, then that's where you're going to add it into the variations up here. Size map. Again, if it's a large that you're selling, make sure to put large in the size map. Outer material type. Is it cashmere? Is it wool? What is it exactly? You can add up to five different material types. Material composition. This is up to you. What is the material composed of? Variations. This is where you're going to add the different variations or different colors or different sizes of your product. So let's first choose a variation theme. Let's say our clothing is going to have different sizes. So we're going to click on size. We're going to put our first size, large. We're going to add another size, medium. And another size, small. Now we have large, medium, and small. It's going to ask for the size map here. 
This is generally going to help Amazon know exactly what type of size you're selling. So just go and match it with your size. Seller SKU, you're going to go ahead and leave this blank because what you're going to do is create a parent listing. These are going to be child listings under your product. So you don't want different SKUs for each different product. You want it to be all under one. So we're going to leave these all blank. Leave this blank and only change the ones that need to be changed, which is the ones in red. Item condition, new. Standard price. If you want to charge a different price for every size or different sizes, you change the prices here. You're also going to put the quantity of each one here. Once you set your variations, go ahead and move on to the offer. This is where you're going to choose that you're sending the products as an Amazon FBA product. So instead of clicking on, I will ship this item myself, we're going to leave it at Amazon will ship and provide customer service. Once we have cho chosen Amazon will ship and provide customer service, we're going to go and leave it for there. Next is the images. Go and upload the images you have for your product. Keep in mind, products must fill at least 85% of the image. Main images must have a pure white background. Images must be at least 1,000 pixels by 500 pixels. Images must not exceed 10,000 pixels on the longest side. JPEG is the preferred image format, but you may also use TIFF and GIF. We recommend using TIFF or JPEG, not a GIF file. So you're going to want to upload your product images, choose the main one here, and then add the additional supporting images down here. Once you finish filling out all this information, we're going to go into the deep details about your product. We're going to go ahead and do some SEO on your product to make sure your product is found on Amazon. Now we do go into this more detailed in the other tutorial talking about adding search engine optimization to your product. But let's do a quick run through of how it would look. Now that you added the advanced view, we're going to click on description. This is where you're going to add the description of your product. Make sure to add as many keywords as possible. This is what's going to be found when searching on Amazon. Key product features. You can add up to five main product features that will appear on the right hand side of your product listing. These are the first features that they see on your listing. Make sure they have very important keywords inside of them also to help your product show up in search engines. Keywords. This is where you're going to put the search terms and other specific keywords for your product. You can choose what people are going to search for when looking for your product. So find the top keywords that are being used for your specific niche or product and type them into the search terms. Again, this is what people are going to search on Amazon to find your product. More details. Generally, I leave these blank, but you can go in and fill them out specifically to help Amazon know what type of product you have. This page is going to be different for every single product. Since this is clothing, you can see they have the inseam sizes, the rise height, the leg diameter, the waist size, closure type, belt style, bottom style, control type, fabric wash, fit type. There's so many more specifics that you can go into here that will show up on your listing. This will help your customer know what type of product you have. This is how you create a brand new Amazon FBA listing. Once you click on save and finish, it automatically gets reviewed and put onto your account. The next step is sending your inventory to Amazon. It stands for search engine optimization. It also works on Amazon the same way it does at Google. When someone searches for a product on Amazon, your product will pop up if you have your specific keywords inside of your product. So not only having your product on Amazon is going to get you sales, you need to go into your product, click on description, make sure you put on key product features, and inside these key product features, you want to make sure to use very powerful keywords for your product. For this specific product, I'm selling a custom bracelet that is for lion and leopards. So you will see the word lion, leopard, lion, leopard, and you will also see the word tiger, African, black leather, anxiety, gain courage, release fear. These are all things that people search on Amazon when looking for products. 
So you need to make sure that these featured keywords are featured within your key product features. In your product description, you're going to want to have a good typed out description of your product. Make sure to use lots of keywords inside of there when talking about your product. If you're selling, again, a bracelet, you want to talk about how great it fits, that it's a gift. It could be a birthday present, a wedding gift. And this is because people on Amazon are searching for these things. People come to Amazon and buy gifts sometimes. So you want to make sure you put the word gift inside of your product. Or maybe wedding gift, honeymoon gift, birthday gift. People search for ideas on Amazon as well. They may search perfect gift ideas for teens or gift ideas for men. And you want to put this inside your description or your key product features for your product to pop up when someone searches that. Go ahead and click on keywords. Here in keywords is where you're also going to specify more into detail what your product is. These are the more important keywords that are going to be searched when people are looking on Amazon for a product. For instance, the style specific terms. I found that one of the top keywords for my product is tiger eye. So I just use this one keyword for the style specific terms or the style of my product. Event keywords. What kind of events is your product mainly used for? Again, when people are searching for birthday gifts or maybe Christmas gifts or graduation gifts, your product will pop up under these keywords. And these are all open to you. You can change them as much as you want or keep them the same. If you keep them the same, it gives Amazon more time to work on your product and help it break more to the front page. Search terms. This is what people will search for what you want people to type in the search bar to find your product. Platinum keywords. Just as it sounds, these are some of the top keywords that are used for your product. So again, if you're selling a bracelet with lion and leopards, you want to use lion bracelet, leopard bracelet, gold bracelet, tiger eye, Christmas gift. These are some of the top keywords that I want people to search for when looking for my product. Target audience. What audience does your product referred to, whether it's men, women, adult, children, make sure to specify that here in your target audience. This helps Amazon connect your product to the people of age looking for a specific product. Intended use. What is the use of your product intended for? Whether it's a gift or back to school, birthday, Christmas, anniversary, this is totally up to you. Other attributes. These are different styles of your product, whether it's a small, large, big, wide, carved, what style is it, hand-woven, hand-crafted. This is totally up to you on what type of product you have. Subject matter. What subject is your product detailed in? Whether it's animals, lions, leopards, bracelets, tiger eye. These are some of the top keywords that pertain to my product. Some of the top subjects for my product. So for instance, if I was selling a red ball, the subject matter would be red. Ball, red ball, big red ball, small red ball. The word red ball is used consecutively throughout the keywords. So when someone searches for red ball, it's more likely your product is going to pop up. Search engine optimization on Amazon is mainly finding keywords that work with your product. Making sure that the keywords are product specific for you. And when someone searches on Amazon for a specific product, you want to make sure that your product is going to pop up when they type in those keywords. To help you make sure you pop up when they type in those keywords, you want to make sure those keywords are in your features and your product description. And this is how you do product SEO on your listings on Amazon, on FBA. Amazon PPC is pay per click. It is Amazon's advertising platform it allows you to advertise on the first page of your specific niche. Your product will appear at the very top with a sponsored listing post. In order to activate that, go to your Amazon seller dashboard. Click on advertising and then click on campaign manager. This is your campaign manager where you're going to see the analytics of how well your ads are doing. To create an ad, click on create campaign. We're going to do a campaign for a sponsored product. Once you enroll your brand with Amazon, you should be able to create a sponsored brands post and a sponsored display post. A sponsored brand post will show your brand advertised at the top of the listings. A sponsored display post will show ads to users off of Amazon. We're going to go ahead and create a basic sponsored products ad. Click on continue. 
go ahead and name your campaign. Choose a start and end date for your campaign, and then choose a daily budget for your campaign. We recommend anywhere between $1 and $10, but always start off small. What you're going to want to do is start off small with between $1 and $3. This is because you want to test out your campaign first and make sure it works. If the campaign starts bringing in sales, then you can start slowly rising it from 3 to 5 then to 7 and then maybe even to $10 daily. If you start getting more and more sales, then you can start raising your daily budget, and then it will start matching the profit you're making as well. So we're going to start off with a small daily budget of $3. This is to test our campaign. Next, you're going to choose your targeting. Do you want to manually target or do you want to automatic target? With automatic targeting, Amazon would target keywords and products that are similar to the product in your ad. With manual targeting, you are going to choose your own keywords or products to target shopper searches and set custom bids. We recommend starting off with an automatic targeting campaign. Amazon is very smart when finding people to purchase your product. What they do is they grab the category you're in, they'll find your competition, see what is working for them, and then use it for you. Generally, any automatic campaign should start working with Amazon. Once you start figuring out what works with an automatic campaign, then you could start moving into a manual targeting mode. Manual targeting is for more experienced users. Although, if you know your brand, if you know your niche, and know what keywords specifically are for your product, then you want to do a manual targeting campaign. I'm going to go in and show you how to do a manual targeting campaign. Click on manual targeting. Now that you chose manual targeting, you're going to be able to choose who to show your ad to. So let's scroll down. This is the campaign bidding strategy. Amazon has a strategy of dynamic bids, down only, dynamic bids up and down, or fixed bid. Once you place your bid into your product, you're going to tell Amazon, okay, I'm going to allow you to bid on my product, but I only want you to bid downwards. So if someone places a bid and is 10 cents less than mine, then I want you to bid down to maybe 11 cents. So you're beating them. With dynamic bids up and down, you're pretty much telling Amazon that I will allow you to raise my bid out of my daily maximum budget just so I could win that click. Amazon knows when a click is more likely to lead to a sale. That is because they find users that have previously just bought and know that they're more likely to buy something again. This allows Amazon to double or maximize your initial bid by 100%. Fixed bids. This is where Amazon will use your exact bid and any manual adjustments you set. Amazon won't change your bids based on the likelihood of a sale. So if you're working on a specific budget and you don't want to work outside that budget, then you're going to make sure to use a fixed bid. Pretty much telling Amazon, I will not go up or below this bid. Do not change my bid and my bid is set to what I want. We're going to go ahead and set our bid to up and down because we want Amazon to bid for us, whether it's higher or lower, so we can win that conversion. Next, let's create an ad group. <clears throat> an ad group is what products you're going to add to your campaign. You can advertise just one product, or you can advertise all your products into one campaign. What we're going to do is just use one product and add it to our campaign. Targeting. Now that we're doing manual targeting, we're going to choose what type of targeting we want to use. Do we want keyword targeting or product targeting? With keyword targeting, you're able to target specific keywords to your niche. With product targeting, you're able to specifically choose any product on Amazon and target their viewers. For instance, if you had a competitor that is selling your product for a more expensive price, then you can target their product for your product to show up on their listings. Your product will be advertised on their listings, and if their customers see your price is cheaper, you may be able to steal their customers and their sales. We're going to go and use keyword targeting because we want to make sure that our 
product is being seen by the keywords we know match our product specifically. So you're able to choose. Do you want to show your product to broad searches, by the phrase search, or by an exact search? In other words, if someone is searching red ball, it's going to show up under the exact search. If someone is searching for just the word ball, then it'll show up under the word phrase. If someone is searching for the word blue ball, then it's going to show up under broad because they're not looking for a red ball. They're just looking for a blue ball specifically. But your product is still a ball. So it might have a chance of getting a sale with the person who's interested in a blue ball. You're able to choose whether you want it to be broad, phrased, or exact. We're going to go and leave all of them on. Before even choosing what keywords you want to use, we're going to go ahead and choose our bidding. You could do a suggested bid that Amazon thinks that you should do, a custom bid, or a default bid. We're going to go ahead and do a suggested bid because every keyword has a different bid on it. We're going to let Amazon bid whatever they want on those keywords, although they cannot surpass our daily budget. Once you're ready to start putting in your keywords, click on enter list. Now you're going to enter your list and separate each item with a new line. So let's say we're selling a red ball. Of course, one keyword you want to use is red ball. The next one will just be red small ball. Maybe red large ball. Or maybe just the word ball. Or outside play ball. Christmas toy ball. Gift ball. Now these are some of the keywords that I could think would be top keywords for when people are searching for your product. <clears throat> Excuse me, again. You want to make sure you do the research <clears throat> to know what keywords you are using for your specific product. This is recommended for more pro users and once you start knowing your target market a little more. Again, if you're just starting, we recommend using Amazon's automatic targeting. Once you enter your keywords, you're ready to go. Click on Add Keywords. You're now going to see the default bids that Amazon sets for each of those keywords you put in. Some keywords might not have a bid yet, so you're able to choose <clears throat> what bid that is because you're the first one advertising in that keyword. Scroll down and now you're going to put the negative keyword targeting. Generally, this should be left blank unless you don't want your product to be seen by a specific keyword. If there's a specific keyword that you don't want your item to show up under, this is where you're going to put that keyword here. Once you've put in all this information, you're ready to launch your campaign. Click on Launch Campaign. Your campaign will be immediately launched and then you're able to monitor it by clicking on Advertising and Campaign Manager. Here under Campaign Manager, you're going to be able to see your total sales, your ACOS, your impressions, clicks, and the total spend. You're able to choose right down here the date range of your spending or your sales. So if you choose the lifetime, you're going to see how many sales, impressions, clicks, and views that you've got for the whole lifetime of that product. If you just want to see a specific day, such as just yesterday, then you're going to click on that specific day. And it's going to show you what you spent, how many impressions you got, how many clicks, how many orders, sales, ACOS, and actions to copy the information from your campaign. This is how you set up your Amazon PPC campaign. 